Well, hey, welcome to the show before the show where I check to make sure everything is working. I'm your host, Patrick Marletz, and I'm here today with another fellow local game guy and co-host, Will. Hello, Will. My camera's been working overtime these last few days, and there's just a lot of mashugana on it, so don't don't mind me blowing. Don't mind me blowing you. Uh, did you watch season four of uh, Blown Away yet? Is that what it's called? Sorry. Hey, Will. Are you? Is your mic muted again? Or are you? Ah, oh, damn it! Look at look at Will's mic. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, Lord. you can hear me again. I don't know why it's doing that, but uh, Discord it's okay. Is it's Discord okay. Today. Yeah, have fun. Well, we'll get to enjoy that for the duration of the stream, I'm sure. But yeah, hi everyone. If you haven't looked at the thumbnail yet, well, why'd you click on the video? Uh, this is a Fallout uh, combo guide. For anyone out there that was interested in getting the latest combos in their decks, but didn't want to do the, the homework, well, this video is for you. Um, we are kind of rounding the corner on Fallout at this point, though. We should be getting spoils for Thunder Junction soon. Um, Outlaws of Thunder starting, Junction, I should say. I yeah, think starting tomorrow. Yeah. I uh, think so they said the 23rd. I'm probably wrong about that, but well, anticipate that. So, <laughs> if you want to catch up on all your Fallout goodies, you're a Bethesda boy. This will be the stream for you. Uh, blame game, Deep Clue C. Revenant Recon and Deadly Disguise. Hold up. Does Revenant Recon? Oh, that is the Murko set. You said yeah. You said There's you said a, you'd the, like the Murko. The Murko. The uh, Naya one is the clue. It's the um, morph stuff or the disguise stuff. Uh, um, the uh, what is it called? Uh, Bant. Bant. Uh, white, blue, green. Sure. Yeah, Bant. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm Bant. Um, but uh, no, I, no, I, can't, no. I don't know why I'm blanking on Bant. Um, but yeah, the Bant one is the uh, the clue maximum hand size one, and oh. I, there's a fourth that does something, but I can't remember for the life of me what the fourth is. I'll take oh, your that word is on a it. nice box. Thank you. Yeah. So I've uh, just finished sending something off to Ultimate Guard. Uh, it's going to be the info page for One Piece card game. I should be doing some writing with them uh you should see some articles from me on their site but yeah they sent over some some content it's a it's like a pseudo sponsorship except i mean they're, they're kind of paying me to write stuff so well, I, I guess i'll plug ultimate guard visits here I, I forget, I, i'm just looking through the stuff they sent i want to uh, get better at organizing my stuff and i actually really like ultimate guard products like i've been using them for years it's the only reason i reached out to them and they wanted to work with me which was really nice honestly agreed ultimate guard is pretty good and i'm not just saying that and funnily enough i i doubt i'm going to be getting any of the ultimate guard stuff because i don't need send you boxes at all <laughs> yeah. oh that's right well that's that's yeah, funny like i i feel bad like uh i'm gonna keep oswald in the box you made um but i've got a box over there for shurikai and then there's a spot open for another commander deck but yeah i've got all this stuff i want to um I want to get, they've got a different setup where you can put like some of their sidewinders in these bigger boxes and just have everything really neatly organized. I want to do that, but I need to find a new way to organize all my stuff because I've got a lot of Star Wars to organize, a lot of One Piece to, st to still organize, so much magic. And sorceries, you know, we're just waiting on another set. So shout out if you joined the uh, sorcery stream this previous weekend. Uh, it was a long one. But a fun one. I think my commentation was good. Or at least the sorcery team thought so. So that's all that really matters. Uh, we might be doing more in the future. Um, I'll have to reach out to sorcery on that. <laughs> I, I definitely am interested. But uh, I, I'd be happy to commentate any game. I'm not going to discriminate. I, I'm happy to talk about any game I have any knowledge of. But shout out to Andrew really quickly. I was saying this just off camera. I met up with a friend the other day to trade him for this Gecko Moria. Uh, for One Piece, literally, I bought three boxes, and the hit rate is low, but um, there's a percentage chance that you can get an AA leader, an alternate art leader in your boxes. All three of my boxes, I had AA leaders, except I was really shooting for Gecko Moria. So the fact that Andrew came through, traded the one he pulled, thank you if you watch this. But uh, yeah, Will, how, how have you been doing? How's your uh, TCG journey going these days? <laughs> 
Uh, my my TCG stuff has been good. Um, for for today, my day's been a little bit crazy, but for TCG, guys that. have been good. Yeah, I, I already told you, and I'm not gonna go through the whole story with the audience. I had a bunch of bad luck. Was able to luck, luckily get through it. That's the long and short of it that I'll say. But uh, mm. for TCG player stuff, uh, I'm looking forward to potentially picking up some casual stuff so I can play some of my dumb decks in EDH against my friends because I haven't been able to do that in a while. Mm. And I think the uh, the decks I'm planning on building are uh, Sarvok and Noble Heritage. And I think the gimmick I'm going to be doing is only partner stuff for a while with my friends. But uh, Sarvok and Noble Heritage, Livio and Kodama, and then... Um, it's probably some Doctor Who combo, but basically it's my two my two dumb rule breaky decks for hmm. casual. It sounds awesome. Maybe I should. Would it be weird? I don't know. I've built a CDH list my whole life. Oh, dude, I, my wedding ring is somewhere. It's killing me that I'm just not on me right now. Don't tell Ellie. It's probably in the kitchen. Sorry. Patrick, I built CDH decks. Are you trying to flirt with our viewers right now? Act like you're no, not No, I'm available. Uh, <laughs> no, I just, it threw me off guard. Um, I, I like to take my ring off. I don't like washing my hands when I have things on my hands. So I take my ring off when I'm washing my hands or doing dishes. And I was doing uh, both earlier. <laughs> I think I left my ring in the kitchen but it's, it's it's neither here nor there. Actually, it's there. It's not here. So we won't, we won't dilly dally with that. But I've made nothing but CDH decks my whole life, Will. Ever since I was a small child. Is it time to make a casual deck? Would that be weird? I, mean, I don't know. I should probably have one for events. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't worry. I'll give you the $7 Sia list with the whole, like, 200-card sideboard, and you can mix and match whatever you want for that. Is that cool, though? Because it's a combo oh. thing. No, no, no. $7 Society isn't a combo deck. It's a really stupid value deck because you just oh. play one mana sink like a almighty bushwagger and then you just start punching somebody with a 2020 one mana creature. Okay, so it's fair? Is what yeah, you're saying? It's, it's fair. But it's fair, but it feels very unfair because it's just like I have all the mana in the world and then you just start punching people to death. Hmm. Oh, that does sound fun. I uh, I don't know what I would want to do in a casual setting. Um, maybe that new... I don't know. I, I, I keep thinking back to that one stream I did with Channel Fireball and I played Tiny Bones. And I, and I don't know. I don't, I don't remember claiming it was casual, but I remember it being a bad experience for everyone except for me. Yeah. So I don't want to do that again. Um, it did really well though. I don't, I don't know. Is stacks like frowned upon in a casual setting? Am I allowed to do that? It depends. So if you're doing stacks with no way of actually ending the game, then you are the scum of the earth in casual. Oh, I'll but have if you're a way. Doing, if you're doing stacks, but you're like, I'm actually making progress, then you're good. Like, um, Noble Sarvok, that's a stacks deck, and I'm gonna be building that for casual. Hmm. I'll be looking at something. That would be kind of fun to have a casual deck. Uh, I needed to. Figure out what that means, though. There's no. I don't think there's like a real proper definition, is there? I want a it's Voltron. A, I want a Voltron casual list. Maybe that would be fun. Well, I got a Saya deck for you. <laughs> I, <laughs> I I I honestly push that deck because the sleeves are more expensive than the entire deck itself. The deck box is more expensive than the entire deck itself. Oof. Because it's like, yeah, you can build a casual deck for seven bucks, and it's a really good deck. That is an accomplishment, though. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Pup is saying we could use the new Tiny Bones. Yeah, he's pretty cute. He's really good in the '99. He's mediocre as a commander. And also, one thing I need to retract about that Tiny Bones because I got it wrong and I misread it. Uh, he only lets you cast permanents from your opponent's graveyard, so you cannot mm. cast Demonic Tutor over and over and over again. You can cast that Wish uh, Wish Claw Talisman over and over and over again and keep blowing it up. But <laughs> if you're breaking you, it, yeah, I guess yeah. you're like using it to tutor your removal to break it to cast it later or something. <laughs> yeah. Still, Tiny Bones is a freaking brutal monster. If there's a stacks deck at the table, because you just keep going. I bring back that stacks piece that just got removed. I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. I do it again. <laughs> Let's, uh, here, let's, we, we can give audience uh, a little bit of knowledge of what we're doing today, I suppose. Well, how do we want to, so I've got all the Fallout cards up here. I'm going to go through these in, uh, the order we have it listed, but yeah, do you want to just cover, 
it's in order with the one exception being a pre-war formal wear because I had to add that last because I I am a fool. Mm, that's fine. We we can um let's do this. Do you want to cover them and then we can discuss all of the combos at length and where they fit into? Like so it's important to note that the combos we're going to illustrate today some of them have uh legendaries is a part of them i think majority of these do and they could either be your commander or they could be in the 99 and we can sort of determine or try to figure that out together what makes the most sense i think for the most part you're probably going to rely on these legendaries being in the command zone uh, but that isn't to say that these combos are strictly for that is that fair yeah okay i agree that's good should, but, we, uh, should, we, should we start this one off yeah we can start it off well hey Welcome to Local Game Group. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and this is Will. And today, Will, let us let us let the audience know what we're doing. Uh, so today we are covering all the combos and ridiculously high power synergies in uh, the new Fallout set. Pretty mm -hmm. much any combo that you can say A plus B end the game, or A plus B do ridiculous stuff to the point where you functionally win. Um, and yeah, uh, we're just going to be going through all of these different cards that enable these combos and each of the potential use cases for these cards. And there's a couple of really good ones from Fallout. I mean, we've been harping on one for quite some time that I think is still on this list. It is worth mentioning. I think we can sort of suss up what list that should technically go into. Uh, but we're not perfect. You might think so from these streams, but we're not. We might have missed a combo. And if we did, if it's A plus B plus C, even just a small C, uh, let us know. And we're happy to field like those combos, discuss them, and try to find out where they slot in. But the goal today is to find all of the combos and discuss them from this latest set. And we'll probably handle these this way in the future. Uh, carve out some of these for short so that you guys that have a shorter attention span can latch onto those to know the recent combos. But outside of that, um, I think we're pretty good to go. Uh, stacks is only bad when you can't do anything and you make people sit for more than 10 turns just passing. Yeah. That's reasonable. Accurate. Uh, and I mean, unless we're all just there to have socialize. Yeah, we're, to, we're just uh, drinking the day away while waiting for somebody to draw that one piece of removal or that Get one board the... wipe. To just um, get and, out of the uh, rule of law. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, before we start the stream, I wanted to cover one thing because this has been a recurring theme on every single stream that we've been going through for the past while, and it's finally been concluded. So, for those of you who don't know, there's been a whole debate going on on the YouTube comments during the streams on the Discord about Mill versus Milled and the Master. So, basically, the whole debate has been what qualifies as a milled card, what can the master reanimate? And we finally got our ruling. I don't think, I'm not sure if they updated it on Scryfall yet, but we got it March 8th. So I want to cover this, and uh, I know that Patrick hasn't done the the shorts for the, the two sides of the mill discussion so far, so I want to cover all of it in one very quick go, because I finally got it to a concise degree and we have the ruling. So long and short, the debate between Mill and Milled started off when Wizards of the Coast added Mill as a compression, not a keyword, meaning that Mill was not its own thing yet. It was just a summary. Uh, with that in mind, Mill initially was a, uh, an action just saying put the top cards of your library into the graveyard. Milled was just saying cards that were put from your library into the graveyard this turn. Or put... Yeah. Mill was just a summary of an action that says put the top cards of your library into the graveyard. Milled was just referring to cards that were put from your library into your graveyard. That was the initial ruling. That's how Wizards of the Coast wrote it down. And neither of those were keyworded. Cards started getting added. Stuff started getting keyworded. Mill became a keyword. Milled did not become a keyword yet. Which meant that Mill was treated as a keyword. Milled was not. Until we got a recent ruling. So if Mill isn't a keyword, then milled cards are whatever's put from the deck into the graveyard and in tomb is milled. If mill is a keyword, or if milled is a keyword, then you need specific mill effects to put cards from the deck into the graveyard, which is finally how it is worded. <laughs> um, so, March 8th, we got the ruling saying that, yes, milled cards are cards put from the library into the graveyard by mill effect. That has not always been the case. That is 
finally the case. We finally mm. got the hard ruling that everybody's been asking for for about two years now. <laughs> or like a year or two. But, yeah. We got that. I don't know if we're going to fit all of that into a short, but long and short, we got the ruling. <laughs> long and hopefully short, we got the yeah. ruling. Um, well, on that note, I mean, I have the master up. You were referencing it just a moment ago. What does this, what does this entail for the master so far as like the keyword Ooh, mill, milled is concerned? Yeah. So milled is now referring to any card put from a library into the graveyard by an effect that says mill. So for the master, your rad counters will still mill cards. You're good. But Tomb doesn't work with the Master, and Hermit Druid doesn't work with Master. Whereas the original ruling, they would work with the Master, but we got the update. So it, right. it no longer works with the Master. We finally got a hard confirmation that, yes, milled is now a keyword. So expressly, it has to say the word mill. or Correct. Re reference um, mill. The Master milled. cannot reanimate anything unless it was put into a graveyard or... Yeah, I, I'm not going to go into the whole rule uh, 701.13c thing. Uh, as long as a effect that says mill put a card from the library into the graveyard, it is milled. If it does not say mill on the effect, the card is not milled. I'm happy. I'm happy we finally got the ruling. It took so long for that to get covered. But we got it. Yeah, we got it. And with that, I think we could probably start by discussing, because the audience was asking about Caesar, Wolfsbane. So, uh, Caesar as a Stax commander in CDH. So we, we talked loosely about Caesar. I don't know if Caesar is on this list. There's technically a combo with Caesar. Uh, if you use, I think we, we discussed this during the legendary tier list. But there's technically a combo with him if you use the Breath of Fury aura, technically. Um, yep. Small C in there, I believe. <laughs> but <laughs> and, and big C sitting in that chair. So as, so far as the stacks manner is concerned, I think it's a good call. I mean, that's a lot of different uh, effects to be doing on a turn. And like if you are rolling with a deck that is just trying to grind value, I think that Caesar is going to be good for it. Uh, you're also allowed to choose two of these, obviously. So... You get a lot of value there. So it's either card you, quality, uh, bodies that you're sacrificing, right? You probably get to do the top one, and then additionally, one of the other ones. Um, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? It is always one and two. You would never but, pick three unless you're able to just one-tap somebody. You would never pick three? Yeah, unless unless it's a kill, or unless somebody just tutored up a Nas and you want to slap them for ten. Mm -hmm. You never pick three. Yeah, and what's cool is that your Ragavan or whatever you play out initially can trigger this as well. You know, uh, it's just whenever you attack, it's not whenever Caesar attacks. So, good value there. I like it a lot. You do need to sacrifice a creature for this, so you're probably doing some sort of go wide strategy or at least incorporating tokens uh, to minimally not have to sacrifice something of value. Uh, but yeah, Marty's got a lot of great stuff. I, I still think that Marty is one of the better colors for stacks. Uh, it has been for a long time. I've, I've done a few Marty stacks builds. Uh, Zergo not being one of them, but I I enjoy that that part of the color pie for that. So I would say go for it, Wolf Spain. Uh, but anyway, do you want to run us through our combos? And I see the first one right here. Sure. Uh, so the cards that we have on this list for that we're going to be discussing are Mothman, the Master, James, Nick, Hancock, Rose, uh, Watchful Radstag, uh, hmm. Nuka Cola, and Pre-War Formal Wear. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty badass. I, I yeah. would love to get a copy, and that's going to happen. I'm sure. Yeah, and uh, the the two that I know that also exist that I did not bring up are uh, Caesar and also the uh, the other doggo that people um, love and hate, and I know Patrick hates, but a lot of people love. Which you is you uh, don't mean dog name? meat, right? I I do mean dog meat, or the it's the, uh, the blue doggo. Form. We can talk about the blue doggo when it comes up. Yeah, where is it? It's 
for some reason, it's, I, it's Azorius, but it's not. Is it blue? I thought it was Azorius. No, you're right. It's it's blue. It's blue, but I think it's like a white in the text box, maybe. Oh, oh that's nope. probably it. Nope, I'm not seeing it. What? Oh, it's because they what? had it split into two sections for colored stuff. Never mind. There we go. No, it's, uh, it's Rex, Porter, Rex Cyberhound. Uh, Rex Cyberhound can also do combos. I just didn't bring up Rex because Rex has like a whole bunch of moving pieces and is not a consistent combo. And too many I, small C's. That's what you're yeah, saying? too many, too many C's. Um, drowning in C's, choking on C's, <laughs> if you will. Drowning um, on the C's. <laughs> drowning yeah. in the high C's. Uh, and uh, Caesar, I didn't bring up Caesar just because it's another Breath of Fury combo. It's, well, exactly. it, everybody knows Breath of Fury. <laughs> Well, we covered him right there. there you yeah, go. there we go. We covered Caesar. Um, but yeah, we got a the wise Mothman. If we want to start with that, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I want to go through the list as you have it recorded. Uh, like script and all, or just the no, the no, summary. you don't have to go over the script. But okay. the master, we don't. We can revise the master in real time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I I kept everything in mind on that. I'm pretty sure because mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, we don't know if this works or not. <laughs> Um, so for the Mothman, the long and short of the Mothman is that you can use food chain to infinitely replay the Mothman, putting infinite rad counters on your opponents, milling them out and burning them to death. Alternatively, you can use Tide Spout Tyrant, or you can ju- uh, use a Cloudstone Curio, any bounce loop, any replay loop. The Mothman will let you just knock people out, and even if you can't make infinite rad counters on people you'll be able to get a lot of counters on the Mothman and just punch people in the face. So, outside of a combo, Mothman's pretty interesting. Inside of a combo, the Mothman is a really good outlet for a lot of different things. Yeah, I feel like Mothman for people is maybe not as satisfying as something that just nets you value. Uh, But punching shit, like, I don't know. Again, I've been excited for doing a, a shy for a while. Maybe that's what I do casually. I feel like a shy would be a cool casual commander. Sans like Jessica. Don't just, don't, yeah, don't play Jessica. That's all I was yeah, going to say. say. Like that's not a casual experience. I don't imagine. If but... you want a fun uh, casual shy deck, a uh, shy Kodama. Well, that would Band be with that sick. green grindy value because Kodama can do some dumb things. Mm. So Mothman uh, by himself, obviously, like that. That would be one place for this combo. I don't know if I would want to insert this into its own list. I'm not sure this is one of those A plus Bs uh, that you'd really shoot for. Is there a list that this arguably works just better in the 99 in? I mean, it's like, no. there's only... <laughs> Does Sisse want this? Sisse likes legendaries in the 99, but doubtful. Uh, I mean, um, unless sis, unless somebody uh, vampiric tutors before their turn and then you uh, flash in Mothman to give them a rad counter so they mill the card they tutored. Unless you really want to do that and just say you don't play Mothman. No. No, that's fair. Uh, the Master is by far better. Speaking Ooh, of pub the stomp. Master, Yeah, we'll, that is our we'll next one. Over <laughs> so, the Master is very similar to Mothman. Play Food Chain, get infinite rad counters on your opponents and just deck them out or burn them to death. Do Tide Spout Tyrant Loops to do the exact same thing. You can also try to do Cloudstone Curio loops, Team or Sabertooth loops, whatever floats your boat. The fun thing about the Master over Mothman is that you have another set of combo lines where you can reanimate Razaketh or Hoarding Broodlord and set up the whole combo just by top deck tutoring them and then milling them to radiation. Mm. Really good. He's a, a BS reanimate commander that can cheat in your big stuff for the win. Put target on your graveyard that was milled this turn. Yeah, and uh, I put it up on the screen earlier, but I'll, I'll put up the radiation card just as a refresher. Uh, how it triggers, what it looks. It's honestly one of the cooler looking like reminder tokens in the game. Uh, but yeah, you it's uh, it's mill specifically, <laughs> the very mill specific yeah. card. Uh, but that's what uh, Will is referencing there. Yeah, obviously, I think the master wants to be its own commander. Again, I don't know if this is one of those combos from this set that necessarily... And that's the thing, I think you'll notice this trend with a lot of future sets, not only Fallout as we're covering it today. Um, Magic does put an emphasis on legendary creatures uh, for us commander players, which is great. 
Um, but not a majority of these want to fit into other lists. They really want to do their own thing, which is fine. Uh, is there a list though that you could think of that would want this? Not entirely. There, you can probably run this in Sidisi, but I think that you'd rather just run this over Sidisi. And I mean the uh, not Salt the Mono Black, one. not the yeah. Mono Black, of course. <laughs> um, I will say though, the okay. other uh, the other kind of dumb thing about Master Transcendent is that you can build a Tide Spout Polymorph deck without Polymorph just by doing any top deck tutor get Tide Spout into the graveyard and then mutate mm. it, uh, whatever you want to call that effect. The Master is really cool. I like it. I Can I do this casually? <laughs> uh, maybe. I mean, you could probably do some fun mill stuff. As long as you don't do mill your deck combos, you're good. Mm. Uh, well, also, I like Liberty Prime them. would be a casual thing. Sorry, go on. Yeah. I nearly forgot to mention the other master combo, which people have been really liking, which is a Basalt Mesmeric Orb. Mill your entire deck, mm. reanimate Thorkel, win the game. The reason why people really like it is Basalt is just a good uh, a good mana rock. You can find it with the master with transmute artifact effects by turning the master, which is an artifact creature, into Basalt Monolith or Mesmeric Orb. And Mesmeric Orb is really BS with the master because he doesn't reanimate a creature in your graveyard. He reanimates any creature in any graveyard that was milled this turn. Mm. So if somebody mills stuff for, from Mesmeric Orb, you get their Razaketh, or you get their Rule of Law, mm. or you get their whatever. Right. I'm wondering if there's a Grinding Station line, even, if you wanted to. I mean, uh, you know, Grinding Station works really well in tandem with Underworld Breach, but there, there's potentially something there. Like, if for some reason you don't have access to your Thassa's Oracle, I guess is the real thought, but... It'll be rare that someone uses a Praetor's Grasp to remove your own Thassa's Oracle unless they're trying to go for their own win with it. Uh, some, you know, the situations in which you don't have access to it are kind of limited, but... Uh, Even if they remove your Thoracle, though, you can just uh, reanimate your Tide Spout Tyrant instead and then mm -hmm. do infinite damage or infinite radiation with the Master or something along the lines of that. You have so many options with this guy. He's just the Swiss Army knife of this site or of this set. Yeah. Why the fuck did I say site? He's the Swiss <laughs> Army knife of this set. Were He's you playing, really, uh, really good. Were you playing sorcery recently? Will? I was not. I don't. I just had a slip of the tongue, and I don't know why. It's okay. I had fun playing sorcery over the weekend. I, I'm excited to get back into it. I've got this. Uh, I should be doing a stream soon um, with Kyle of Scourge Altars. So you can expect to see that soon. Someone I was chatting with, like, uh, during a sealed event, and we got on the topic of firewall and how stupid it would be to, like, push and pull our opponents through walls of fire. I'm like, this uh, conceptually is very... <laughs> it's working for me. Um, so I definitely hang tight for that. But at any rate, um, I think Nick is our next... It, it would be James, but I'm going to hop to we... a four player because I yeah. think that would... Yeah, the next one. Yes, 100%. Hundred percent. Um, yeah. this one's so freaking cool. You, I'll, you can I'll let it. you cover this one because I know you like this one. All right. Well, mono white's got a combo. Um, but you know when a mono color gets a combo, that means everyone gets a combo. And guess what, guys? This wasn't isn't linked to a legendary, so there are options here. Thank God. Uh, for two generic and white, you have artifact equipment, equip value three. We're not too concerned about that. You know, vigilance plus two plus two. That's cool and all. But when pre-war formal wear enters the battlefield, return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield and attach pre-war war formal wear to it. Um, the, all those words sound really good, uh, and in that combination, amazing. So, what else can you do with this but uh, combo? So, there's a guy called Lean and Relic Water who's who's been a, a combo clown for years, and I might as well look him up. Actually, um, I wouldn't say he's a combo clown. I'd say he's a combo cat. Pretty cool cat. Ooh. Yeah, this is true. It's so funny. His art is so funny, too. Like, he's trying to hide this, like, relic. He's like, <laughs> stop! <laughs> Don't take it from me! Uh, he probably dies in this scene, though. So, I mean, it's just an assumption, but... Uh, so he exiles artifacts and enchantments, and there's a couple of cards that do this. Um, every... Well, not every color has this, but black and white have these predominantly. Uh, they'll enter the battlefield, they'll leave the battlefield, and return the thing. It's temporary removal, but in this instance, like an animate dead, uh, it's quite good, because when you have an effect that has this ability, right, 
you're able to kill Leon in Relic Warder and then bring him back when the thing re-enters the battlefield. So apply this with any small C <laughs> or any commander that has a sacrifice effect for value. And that, you know, it could be drawing your deck. It could be milling opponents. It could be damaging people. Something like a Blasting Station, right, to keep it in mono white will do this. But then, you know, add red. You have Goblin Bombardment. Add, add any color with any function that says sacrifice a creature or permanent. And if there is some value on the end of it, uh, repeat that uh, infinite times. And, you know, I use that word loosely. Nothing's infinite in this game. The games eventually end. But you'll get there with pre-war formal wear. Well, I I, mean, I really love this card. Um, I'm excited to hopefully pull a copy in the not too distant future. We'll see. But uh, your thoughts on it? This card is really freaking good. Uh, the only reason why I, uh, the only two reasons why pre-war formal wear are worse than the animate dead loops themselves is mm. animate dead doesn't care about CMC. Pre-war mm. form formal wear only works with Leonin. That is the only card that combos with it. Is that a fact? Yeah. There's no, I, there's no three cost. Three cost. Nothing. That it's specifically an artifact. Uh, yeah. Um, Leonin gets away with it specifically. There's one other thing that hits a non-land permanent, but the issue is that it exiles it, and when this leaves the field, they get a spirit token, um, mm -hmm. which you probably don't want. Uh, yeah. No. 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 That's true. And also, it's it's more costly than your traditional anime dead dance of the dead uh it's the same cost as a necromancy right those are the yeah. three go-to cards for lean and relic water lines but you know again uh, this isn't mono white so functionally you can do a few other things with it sorry well with the the whole anime dead loop as well you have infinite death triggers which are usually easier to abuse because you can just use blood artist which has other utilities outside of this combo or, or gravestorm or Gravestorm, or uh, <laughs> any creature sack outlet, because you can sacrifice yeah. Leon in, in response to the animate dead sack trigger. But um, mm -hmm. so that the original combo has a bunch of other lines. But the reason why pre war formal wear is debatably just straight better than all of the animate dead lines, Hermitrude's back, boys. Mm -hmm. uh, this combo makes Hermitrude so much better and actually makes Hermitrude viable and gives a lot of decks that didn't have clean win cons really clean win cons. I would give this a similar rating to an intuition line to some extent. It's worse than intuition, but it is less color intensive mm -hmm. and easier mm -hmm. to search up in a lot of situations because green right. has all the creature tutors. And if you're playing green, you have Hermitrude and you set up the combo. So if you're playing a Selesnya deck and you can get away with running no basics, I think you run this combo. Because uh, it's just um, Hermit Druid, Pre-War Formal Wear, Leonin, and name a sack outlet that wins the game, Blasting Station. Let's go. I think that, I think that you would also do this, and like obviously I, this was brought up when we were discussing Teshar, who yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do soon, I promise. Maybe next, let's just, let's next Friday. <laughs> but... If you had it in a mono white list that had some sort of self mill strategy, Will already mentioned it, Mesmeric Morb, uh, Basalt Monolith, what you do is mill yourself, and then there's a little card called Savine's Reclamation that lets you bring two things back. The two things you bring back are obviously pre war formal wear coupled with your outlet. So, yeah. likely Blasting Station. Uh, but in doing so, you get three cards that allow you to loop the Leonin, this, and that. Um, but it does require a little bit of mana. It's important to note that Basalt Monolith will help you pay for said cost. So Sabine's Reclamation's flashback cost is, I forget, it's like five or six. It's up there. Um, so it's not difficult to get to. It's maybe a little mana intensive. Obviously, Hermit Druid will do the same thing by itself. Uh, you just need to build for it. But yeah, it's good. Yeah. If you have any deck that runs uh, Selesnya and hasn't had a clean win con for a while, consider this. It's pretty good. Um, mm, and to I give think the... so. That's true. Any, like, Selesnya has issues finishing games, and this this will... Like, Tulane, you're not adding bad Tulane's cards doing example. this. Huh? Tulane's a good example. Like, Tulane mm -hmm. has uh, had issues closing out games because it has really weird uh, loops to win, but it has all the value to survive. Mm -hmm. This gets around it. Also, fun fact, uh, this combo wins through a rule of law because you are activating Hermit Druid, then casting Savine's Reclamation, and that is the only card you cast. So, mm. yes, it's really good in your stacks deck. And um, 
to give a a quick synopsis for the the short that will probably inevitably come from this. The mm -hmm. reason why pre-war formal wear is really good is if you have any way to mill through your entire library, you can Savine's Reclamation back your pre-war formal wear and any sacrifice outlet. Formal wear re revives Leonin, Leonin exiles formal wear, and then you can sacrifice Leonin infinite times to keep getting back formal wear, which gets back Leonin. Repeat, 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 infinite whatever your sack outlet is. Pretty easy to set up, pretty clean. Alright, talk to me about Daddy. Uh, about James? Is, is that what you're asking about? That one, yes, uh, that daddy. So, James is a interesting one, because it works, but it really feels like it shouldn't work, because math. Um, long and well, short. Alright, I go if, for it. If you can it. get a 8 mana, and or 8 generic and 2 blue, and have KCI in play... James can make you 8 clue tokens, which you can sacrifice to make uh, 16 mana, which you can pay into any refractor effect, pay to make a mana, or of any color, to filter through your colors to recast James again, making more and more and more and more and more clues, giving you infinite mana, infinite clues, infinite of every color, draw your deck, win the game. All you need is KCI, enough mana, and a refractor effect to change your color list. What about, color. Uh, what about Urza? Yeah, screw your Urza. We got James. Who well, names their Urza. kid Urza, Patrick? <laughs> not James. <laughs> that, that, he's not the dad of Urza. But if Urza was there, that's also like a way to filter your. You yeah. could you could use the you could use two artifacts to give you the blue necessary. Yeah, uh, is, and is the best I'm part saying. is you can uh, you can either sack the clue to draw or uh, sack the clue to mana after tapping it for mana because you don't need to tap clues for either effect. So. This uh, ability this requires you to have it as the commander, right? Okay. Right. You you're not going to be able to do James Wandering Dad in the ninety nine unless you've got a way to play this adventure from your grave. It's a little more convoluted that way uh, because what we're trying to do we're not to, we're not going to send him on the adventure. We're going to uh, as per commander rules replace that by putting him in the command zone instead. But. I mean, you could technically do it outside of the CZ, but I think it makes the most sense if you you wanted to try to do this to play it as its own commander. And Mono Blue is not bad. It, it's not, it wouldn't be difficult to find KCI. Uh, it would potentially be difficult to get the mana requisite to do the combo, but I guess maybe you roll with High Tide in this instance. I mean, High Tide is beneficial to everyone with an island, but I think you could probably use that to get the ball rolling. Am I wrong? Uh, well, you can use High Tide, but the funny thing is, you can win the game with it at instant speed with this deck, as long as you have a Refractor and a KCI in play, because you just need the mana subsequent to get the whole James loop started, which is uh, X equals 8, and then you win the game, because that adventure is an instant. You can draw at instant speed, and then with infinite mana and infinite cards in hand, you probably have a couple hundred ways to win. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. So this is the ultimate draw land go commander because <laughs> he just mm -hmm. sits there saying, "You don't know when I'm gonna win. You'll see me play the KCI, but then you'll know I have eight mana, and even if you interrupt me, I'll counterspell and wait next turn to combo off." Yeah, I definitely go heavy action. Definitely go heavy artifacts for James. You want to make sure that your KCI's got like stuff because you know, like Will was saying, it it takes eight to get the ball rolling. So sacrifice some non-essential things. Keep the refractor. Keep the KCI, obviously. Uh, this next one is one that's I, I'm you know some of these we I think we've discussed during the legendary review. The switch up here is the fact that we want to discuss these if they're possible in the ninety nine, um, and then some of these we haven't touched on. I don't think. But if there are any combos that you guys are aware of that you want to share with us, let us know from Fallout. Yeah, but uh, the next one is a uh, Nick Valentine which we are a month too late to cover this card. Valentine's Day was last month. Um, okay. I'm, but, I'm, I'm cool on Valentine's Day, my guy. Do you celebrate yeah. Valentine's Day? I did not. I was just busy being a loner, working yeah. on random projects. But uh, Nick yeah. Valentine, Private Eye, is a legendary artifact creature, which is already sweet enough. And Nick Private Eye can't be blocked except by artifact creatures, which is the entire point of the combo. If he can't be blocked by creatures, that'll I'm fucking with you. Um, mm -hmm. 
Nick's main mechanic is whenever Nick or another artifact creature you control dies, you may investigate. This is very similar to another Azorius commander that I covered a while ago, but honestly, Mono Blue is probably better than Azorius, and clues are probably better than incubation tokens. So, the reason why Nick is useful and just really strong is he makes KCI combos much cleaner. Because if you have KCI, Mirror Retriever, and Junk Diver, you sacrifice Mirror Retriever, getting a clue, returning Junk Diver. Play Junk Diver, sacrifice Junk Diver, get a clue by uh, getting back a Mirror Retriever. You can now sacrifice these clues to more mana with KCI, giving you infinite mana. Then with your infinite mana, you repeat the loop over and over and over again, getting infinite clues, which you draw with your infinite mana and win the game. Mm -hmm. Nick is basically just KCI does dumb things dot deck. You can also replace that KCI with... Uh, Alter, Ashnod's Altar. Ashnod's Altar, uh, yeah, Phyrexian yeah. Altar, name an altar that makes mana, and he lets you win the game. So he's a altar commander that does not require the altar specifically, and you can play even the bad recursion effects, and he can still do a lot of work. So, cool KCI commander makes all the combos a lot cleaner. Uh, yeah, let, let, sorry, I, I opened it up to the chat, but let me know what you guys are playing legendary-wise these days. I've never heard of Magus Lucia Kane. Or I'm sure I have, I just don't know the deck. Uh, I will take a look at that. Oh, Magus oh. Lucia Kane is the, uh, the different wart commander. The hmm. quote-unquote better wart. Uh, but yeah... Sorry, well, 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 so the issue with uh, Ashnod's Ultra, I suppose, in this instance, is the fact that it won't break your clues. Correct. Um, you might It'll need to add another body to that line. I mean, you'll yeah. you'll make infinite, you'll investigate infinitely, so that's something at least. Yeah, you can um, do um, what's called scrap trawler potentially. Mm -hmm. Well, also, you know, there's. There's plenty you can do. Like I would still probably add that altar. Uh, it will get the ball rolling on sub some sub strategy, but it won't be like a very quick combo. Um, but yeah, I like the synth protective. I don't think you would want to. I'm oh, sorry. The Imotech is probably still holding the spot as one of the better KCI commanders. Mm, mm -hmm. I think that this could go in the 99 of a deck that wanted help easing the combo. But if you're doing just if you were doing artifact shenanigans and you just needed an outlet, is this so bad? What is it? What is a commander that could actually get value from making clues off of this guy, outside of himself? Uh, Urza could potentially use it to some extent because it does not care that an artifact, or it does not care that a uh, non-token artifact creature mm -hmm. dies. So your thopters become clues, which you can use for draw, and you can use for more tapping. Uh, you can also run Nick in any of the weird decks that want to run KCI. Alternatively, there's one other deck I was thinking of that kind of likes... Oh, uh, Joyra, the Joyra mm. Weatherlight Captain. Because you have uh, you have Underworld Breach for a bunch of crazy lines. You like sacrificing your artifacts to some extent. If you sacrifice those artifact creatures that you're using to draw, you'll get clues which allow you to draw a tiny bit more. This is also a historic spell for Joyra, so not too bad. I don't think people are going to be mainlining this in Joyra, but a couple people mm -hmm. might try it out. Yeah, it's not a bad call. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just another value engine. But again, it is very specific. Uh, but yeah, that, that covers that covers Nick. I have Hancock over here. Give yeah, me one so, second. Uh, Hancock is a uh, here only because of one thing. So Hancock is a zombie mutant legendary creature. <laughs> That gives your zombies plus one or plus X plus X, where X is the number of counters on Hancock, and Hancock has Undying. Hancock is on this list because it's another Undying card for Yogg. Every single time we get another Undying card, it has to be noted because when Yogg hits about 12 Undying creatures, the combo becomes really, really easy to pull off, and Yogg Moth might actually become like a level or two higher in the CDH scale. Yogg went from really, really uh, powerful and really, really played when Paradox Engine was around to nearly unplayable with the Paradox Engine band. Mm. Hancock is the next step to make Yawgmoth a little bit better, because I think this means that we have eight Undying creatures now from my previous count, so we're getting there. We're getting back to it. Yeah, Yawgdog, very playable. 
in other formats. Maybe not yes. as its own commander, but yeah, the Yog Dog is always looking for those undying boys. And uh, yeah, it's just another one. Um, again, if you have any strategy that relies on undying, I don't know if like this is your go-to. Yeah, agreed. You usually it's, want it, it to be cheap. For, yeah, one more undying creature. It's only right. there because Yog. At least for the dog himself. Hey, Joshua. Indeed. Uh, infesting Radroach? Anything with him? Uh, invest, uh infesting no, Radroach can do no, some this... fun things, but, uh, it's no. not, as far as I know, it does not combo, but it is a reusable, annoying piece of crap, and I love it. Um, no, but we're, we're definitely moving away from black, I think, at this point. Yeah, we're in red, and, uh, we got one card that I, I really like, and some people did not like when we reviewed this as a commander, and it's probably just getting reviewed as a commander this time as well. Well, people are is... like, ex as people are still kind of excited for it. I still get comments on one of our shorts discussing Rose as a potential robot commander. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't mind uh, it. Rose, Cutthroat Raider. Um, the whole point of Rose is that Rose is a mono red commander that whenever uh, you attack at the end of the combat, you get a junk token for each opponent that was attacked this turn. And whenever you sacrifice a junk token, you make a red. This is basically another version of Neheb, except you don't need to connect and you don't need to attack each combat because every single time you move to combat, you don't need to attack and then you get the junk tokens at the end of combat. Mm -hmm. Um, I sorry, it's uh, yeah, it's if you attacked a player this turn, so as long as you've attacked at least once. Uh, Rose is pretty cool because with a little bit of cost reduction or with the roaming throne, you do all the things that you do with Neheb. This is basically just Neheb Part 2, but it's more consistent and it's much safer because you can stockpile junk tokens to burst draw in one time and then get a bunch of mana. If Rose gets removed, you're still a happy camper and Rose never actually has to connect, so you don't have to worry about people having big bodies or just a plethora of bodies to block and kill Rose. And Rose is also a first striker, so there is just a little bit of value there. Yeah. Um, you do need obviously like Neheb is cool because there's some haste utility like the Obsidian Axe I think is one of them there's some haste utilities you can use in that deck that you can use here but I'm sure there might be something that haste enables artifact creatures that I'm unaware yeah, of or just not thinking of you don't need to of. give Rose haste Patrick you just need to have anything on board <laughs> if you attack this turn yeah this is factual Neheb is very specific to Neheb swinging uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there are benefits to how Neheb gets his draw. Um, you are uh, discarding and drawing, right? So you are fueling your graveyard for an Underworld Breach turn, or this is a impulse draw with junk. But it's not the end of the world. Also note that, you know, you can't sacrifice junk uh, for value. Like, if you are... If you're stockpiling them... Um, you do need to activate junk at sorcery speed. So, you know, if someone does just some mass wipe, you are going to suffer from that. Uh, and if it's like <laughs> of all artifacts for or lower, then you're really going to suffer. But the cost is the same. I think that Will's evaluation is not off, though. As a lover of Neheb, <laughs> I would say that this is comparable. Although, I would, maybe Neheb is a little bit more explosive, even though... I wouldn't say Neheb was, like, that quick. Like, when Neheb comes down, I think there is this uh, urgency to remove Neheb as if something were going to happen. I think that Rose is perhaps more calculated, but not as quick. But Neheb was never really that quick to begin with. Yeah, I'll say the major difference... So, Neheb is more explosive, which is, funnily enough, the exact same adjective I was going to use. <laughs> um, Neheb is more explosive. Oh, yeah. Rose is greedier and grindier because you are getting card advantage with rose you are not getting card advantage with neheb mm, so mm -hmm. that is true you are you are only ever breaking even um in that sense right and you know even though the cards aren't going to hand here um they are something you can play per turn so any lands you get off of rose is junk specifically but yeah there's there's i like rose it is far more calculated like the fact that you can you could do this action whenever. Uh, the mana is contingent on you sacrificing the junk, though. And this is like sorcery speed mana gain. 
uh, off of a trigger, right? So however the junk gets destroyed, it doesn't need to self-sacrifice. It could be anything technically. You will have that red, so that is kind of important to note. It's not like an ability that lets you sacrifice junk for red. What I'm hearing is another KCI commander. Let's go. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, I hope you imagine if like it's the thing you exile and you lack the mana to cast it. Nah, that would hurt. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's kind of dope though. Like this is kind of cool with uh, the aggravated assault. Like you can you can do that still. Um, but bear in mind, like it is it is only ever going to be three tops, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, which is why yeah. you need uh, either cost reduction or the roaming throne to double the rose activations, mm. or the mm. new card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction that Mark Rosewater mentioned, which is a uh, double legendary triggers. That's coming. We don't know any details about that card, but we know that it says that it doubles the triggers of legendary creatures. Tell me it's a... Uh, uh, okay, never mind. You said we don't trigger know what specifically. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm always looking for something new for Oswald. If it was doubling the activations, that'd be great. Uh, maybe. Please. I don't know. It could also double activations, but... Oh, but Patrick, mm. you have that, that one uh, artifact legendary creature that says that it can copy the, act, uh, the activation of a legendary creature. Uh, that isn't your commander. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, that card annoyed me so much. I'm so sad that that guy had that last little bit of text saying that it doesn't work on your commander because it would right. such a good card. I forget the name of it, and I'm not even. Gonna, I know the art because the art is really cool, but I forget the name, and I don't want to remember the name. Please don't say the name I in the know. chat. I'm because it's because <laughs> it, it's so frustrating. It's such a shit card. Like you, you get everyone so hyped for this card, and it's like it's a fair mana value if it lacks that text. Because it has that text, you can make that thing zero, and no one would play it. It's just not good because of it, that fact. It's Stronic Resonator. But also uh, copying activated abilities, and it's a creature, so it's a little bit easier to find in certain colors. The card was so... I think it had haste, too. The card was so good. I think it's And called then they said you Peregrine can't copy your commander. Yeah. It's like Peregrine Engine, or Peregrine something. Yeah. I had, I'm sorry, I had to go sad. and remember it. Yeah, it is It is sad. But does Watchful Radstag make you sad, Will? Uh, no, it makes me quite happy because it lets you do fun, greedy things. For those who don't know, Watchful Radstag is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two creature with Evolve that whenever it evolves, you make a token copy of it. Um, the reason why Watchful Radstag is a decent combo card is Kodama of the East Tree. Kodama of the East Tree says that whenever a permanent enters the battlefield under your control other than for Ko from Kodama's ability... You get to put in a permanent with the same or lesser mana value from your mm -hmm. hand into play. The reason why it's really good with Watchful Radstag, if you have creatures in your hand, you are playing every single creature in your hand. You can easily play out your entire hand very quickly, and you can keep triggering Evolve over and over and over again. As long as you have a three or less mana creature with, like, three or more power, or four, uh, three or more power or toughness, or four or more power or toughness, you go more and more and more and more and more. If you can get a bunch of uh, three toughness creatures and then drop that Eidolon of Rhetoric, then you are getting like 30 Watchful Radstag triggers and then getting every permanent from your hand into play. This isn't a strict combo, but it is a kind of one card or one card storm effect with a specific commander. And uh, having a board of three threes and four fours is pretty good at just knocking a player out next turn. Kind of reminds me of like Polyraptor. The, the ability to nonsensically generate many copies of itself, although this is this is a little different. Um, it's, it's basically Polyraptor, except instead of having self-ping effects, you just have a bunch of pissed-off elk mutants. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, take, take your pick. Elk mutant or dinosaur? It's really up to you. But yeah, Watchful Red Sags, just, it, it's up there. I, it's one of those cards I feel like you should just keep your eye on. Uh, but like Will said, there there are things you can do with it, obviously, with Kodama. So if you are playing for that partner, you can incorporate this. Um, it's Yeah, it's good, though. I don't know what else I would put it in, but it's one of those... I think it's... I don't know. There, every now and then there's a card that you should just pick up a single of. I would say this is one of them. Yeah, there are so many different Kodama decks that you have options to put it in. Because you have, like, Kodama... Uh, 
Kodama Timna, you have uh, Kodama Krom, you have, I think I've seen people do Kodama Thrasius at some point, Kodama Sakashima is a really dumb and powerful deck as well. You have a lot of different options. Uh, there's just one more combo that we want to discuss. Again, if there's anything that came to mind for you guys from the set, let us know. Or even in the chat after this, if there's something that was really great that we missed, please let us know. And uh, um, this one we've we... referenced like five other times, <laughs> and I will never get tired of it because I still really like this combo. Are you I using it? Are you... Are... Not oh, sorry. yet, but I will Okay, be. okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious this... to know what Liston... Uh, well, I guess we'll get to it in a second. Yeah, it is Nuka-Cola Vending Machine. Three mana for an artifact that says, pay one, tap it, create a food token. And whenever you sacrifice a food token, you create a tap treasure token. This goes infinite with Peregrine Took, making it so that whenever you sacrifice your three foods to draw a card, you get three tap treasures individually, which each make a food token off Peregrine Took's effect, thus letting you sacrifice those three foods, getting three more tap treasures, and drawing a card and three more food again, again, and again, drawing your deck. And if you have Academy Manufacturer, you can do this in kind of any color with a little bit more of a build around. So, how does that work, Will? I don't understand. You're sacrificing three foods simultaneously. That's uh, the get, audience. Yeah, you get three individual triggers that each uh, check themselves, making one tap treasure, making a food. Making another tap treasure, making a food, making a third tap treasure, making a food. And is that three because it says it, it doesn't treasures. say one or more? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I assume you've been seeing comments with people being like, but yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah, no, it it, it's, it's, it, it, it comes up a lot. I mean, I, I haven't done it personally, and I've never been called out on it, so I guess I can't confirm or deny. But so far as I'm, you know. As far as yeah, I can tell it, from reading this card, it, it functions. It's very funny because if you look at the price of this card as well, a friend of mine has been laughing at the price tag on this oh, uncommon. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh, is this like another... Uh, sorry, uh, you guys can see it now. Um, what? Even? Why is the standard one $44? No, that's not right. Hold up. Why? It's a foil. The foil copy's $44. Oh, yeah, is this like another, uh, what are they called, Ring Wraith? Is this another Ring Wraith value uncommon? So, people so people have put this akin to some form of the One Ring. It's obviously weaker than the One Ring for uh, just generic value effects. But in casual, people are going <laughs> gaga over Academy Manufacturer Nuka-Cola because you can sacrifice the food token to make a food token, a, treasure, a tap treasure token, and a clue. Sacrifice mm -hmm. that food again, and you get infinite tap treasures, infinite uh, untapped clues. So any untap effect wins you the game, or any mm -hmm. KCI effect wins you the game, or Urza wins you the game, or name a thing. Uh, it's so dumb and casual, and in competitive, Took is pretty good. It's uh, This is another decent Selesnya combo. I think does, the uh, um, does Kenan use it? Probably better. Kenan Who uses, uses it? Who uses it? For uh, <laughs> Nuka Cola, I'd say that it goes in any deck that either is one mono green and just needs a combo. I think some Yisan decks may run a took a Nuka Cola because you can find a Elvish. What is it? Not Elvish Reclaimer. Is it Elvish Reclaimer? The Elf Elvish that lets you uh, sacrifice the land and search for Inventor's Fair. Yeah, um, it's so slow though. But yeah, the the chat. Um, Josh was saying. It kind of sucks because in green decks you only have two ways to find it: Inventor's Fair and Coldrotha, Cold, Coldrotha or Coldotha Forge Master. Cold yeah, uh, and it, it is kind of painful. Agreed. It it hurts a lot, but the thing is that if you tap into white, you get Oswald, which finds Nuka Cola Vending Machine, and all of your mm -hmm. green tutors find Oswald. Also, all of your uh, green tutors can find the Elvish Reclaimer, which lets is it Elvish Reclaimer? I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. <laughs> Give me a second. Chicken man. Yes, I was correct. It, all your creature tutors let you find Elvish Reclaimer, which let you find Adventure's Fair, which let you find Nuka Cola Vending Machine. It's a really yeah. long and roundabout way to do it, but yes, you have a way of pseudo consistently finding Nuka Cola Vending Machine. Yeah, Green Sun Zenith, your Elvish Reclaimer. Use your Elvish Reclaimer to get your Inventor's Fair. Get enough artifacts? Is it artifact dependent, or you just need to pay for it? I forget. You need to have a. Uh, I think you need to have Metalcraft for uh, Inventor's Fair. It doesn't use Metalcraft as the keyword, but you need 
some form of metal craft. But right. the fun thing is, uh, Hook is now a CDH viable commander because you just need to have your commander a way of making tokens and then a way of finding Nuka Cola vending machine. And in mono green, you're just going to be hard ramping to try to find any way of getting Nuka Cola. Yeah. So I think that is another deck that is actually CDH viable. <laughs> yeah, Nuka Cola itself does make tokens, by the way. I mean, yeah, not that it's... people are going to let it stick around. Yeah, you need to be able to make one token outside of Nuka Cola <laughs> to make the token off of Took and then do the whole combo. But it's really not hard considering that we have a, a forest that can make a token because we have the, uh, what is it, Gingerbread Cottage or Witch's Cottage or something, which is just if you have three or more forests, this enters on tap and makes you a food. Right. Uh, so I have Took on the screen now so you guys can see it. We've definitely talked about this in the past. Is, is there a deck that outside of Took, I mean, that is the clear... A plus B, but is there something else that would want to use Nuka Cola vending machine? It's very niche. It's not bad. And like Will was saying, it's good in other like more restricted formats. You were saying Popper would want to play this. Is Popper just common uncommon? Uh Popper is just common. Uh there's so a different wait. there's a different thing that has a common a really dumb common from the set. I can't remember what it is. Mm. Um but uh the the dumb thing with Nuka Cola is usually Simic decks. If you have a Simic deck without a clear win con, Nuka Cola is a good include because you have artifact tutors for Nuka Cola, green tutors for uh, Took. So you can get a pretty easy win off of doing something with that. Mm. Simic has been one of those color combinations that's been hurting for a while, so I'm glad they have a way to win. <laughs> Just outside kid. Um also, I forgot to say, uh, Gruul isn't too bad either, because Creature Tutors find Goblin Engineer, Goblin Engineer finds Nuka-Cola. So, That's true. pretty much, Selesnia does not need this combo, because they got the whole pre-war formal wear combo, which is just way better. Um, and black uh, Green-Black doesn't need the combo, because Green-Black already has a bunch of other things that they can do right now, and they have the... Uh, uh, Wither Bloom Apprentice Chain of Smog combo is another thing. So, but Simic and uh, Gruul probably want Nuka Cola. Selesnia wouldn't want this. You wouldn't want to. No, they they do have it turned into Savine's pre war formal air now. Yeah, if you brought back, it's just easier. It's just a lot cleaner to do that than it would be yeah. to bring back Nuka Cola vending machine and took. Unless you've generated a token else wise and can get there. But. Yeah. I mean, I guess... And, hmm. I mean, hey, if there's a team or commander that also needs a, a good win con, there you go. But I think it's mainly going to be Gruul and Simic decks that want this. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I don't think it's worth... Please, guys, if you're going to buy a copy, please use the link in the description. Uh, but you don't need to. I wouldn't. Not at $20. That's a lot. What can I say? People, people like playing casual. <laughs> I guess so, dude. Yeah, it's funny. How much does Thassa's Oracle cost? Because that's definitely not a casual uh, Like five bucks, I think. <laughs> Let's see if that's still true, though. No, it's a little bit higher. The Secret Lair version is $80, apparently. But, what's but she's about version? 15 Oh. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. Competitive players, get in. Uh, yeah, use both. <laughs> use maybe one. Or maybe not the other. But guys, if there's a, another combo you guys want to talk about from Fallout, please let us know. I think we, we tried to encapsulate all of the really good ones. The only one we didn't discuss was Rex. Yeah. But Rex we know that exists. Uh, do do dumb things, win the game. Look at, uh, what's his, his name? Look at Marisol Pretender. Do what he would do. Hmm. That's all you need to know. Except uh, Rex is better than Marisol because Marisol, I think, can only use the activated abilities once per turn, and I don't think Rex has that drawback. Oh, we'll find I'm gonna, out. I'm gonna no, I'll, put, I'll put him on the screen for us. Deals common damage, mill two cards. Yeah, Rex has energy. all activated abilities of cards in exile with brain counters on them. Rex does not have the once per turn contingent, meaning Rex can do stupid stuff. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so I'm not sure what you guys are covered. Uh, don't worry about it, Josh. You can wind this one back uh, as it's a VOD. But we did cover, I believe, 10 or 11 combos. 
Uh, let me quickly run through that. I can check the list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, no. nine, nine. L little Rexy boys on the screen, though. Uh, but no, yeah, if there's anything we missed, let us know. Otherwise, uh, I'm just going to chill for a second and think about the dinner I'm going to prepare. We don't really have any packs open, sadly. We'll hopefully have some soon. That's usually my pastime in these moments, Will. <laughs> what are you? Uh, what are you most excited about for this year? Uh, it doesn't have to be magic related. Uh, I am looking forward to Hyper Lightbreaker. <laughs> I will never stop saying that. I love how that game looks. I'm waiting for it to come out. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of stoked for. I want to play some. <sighs> Fucking, it's so annoying, dude. I want to play some more Star Wars. I'm enjoying the game quite a bit. I think the art for the game sucks. You'll notice the prices on, like, the boxes have risen because availability. I think they went through... They printed out two months' worth of product, and it's all it, it, it dried up within two weeks. So the game is popular. That's good. I do think the pack opening experience is kind of bland, though. I've said this before. I also think that they should have done more with their alternate arts, like... Just look at any of your competitors. They're doing a way better job. Um, so it's kind of unexciting to open the packs, which is fine for me because I think I'm going to be buying singles from here on out. But I want to get more of those games in, and I want to play One Piece, but Bandai Namco is making it really difficult by just not having product availability. Like, every single event I've tried to go to, I've only been able to participate in one sealed event that was an actual sealed event. Every other sealed event, like the last one I, I ditched out on, they wanted me to come there, not pay for entry, but not get packs to play sealed. No, no, no. You play a constructed deck. And then the oh. thing you pay to get into the event for, the participatory card was only going to be allotted to the top 16, which is fine, like, <laughs> probably could make top 16, right? Except I haven't been able to buy product anywhere, so, like, none of my decks are up to date. Uh, I managed opening a box recently, but I uh, didn't pull enough to have, like, play sets of the things I need. So you do all of that, and then the, you, the winning, the top four, I think, split a box is how it shook out. But for me that just wants to play limited one piece it's super annoying that and this is again this is not the first time there was only been one event that actually ran that i was able to participate in that was actually sealed the rest of them have been bring a constructed deck play constructed and then maybe you get packs it's so obnoxious um is dog uh, dog meat food chain just not good is dog so meat dog food chain just not good? Food mm. chain mills your entire library, puts every aura and equipment from your graveyard into your hand, and then kind of stops there. So you need to have a way to win from the graveyard, which you could do Savine's Reclamation, but the issue is that's set up food chain, do food chain, and then have the pre pre ah, prerequisite mana for uh, Savine's Reclamation, which hurts. Dog meat is... Uh, it can do food chain things, but probably shouldn't do food chain things. Yeah, you should probably just focus on, like, a commander that would do it better. But, I mean, like, if you're a really big fan of Dogmeat from the games and you want to play Dogmeat, he's a good boy and all that. I get it. Um, do it. But I feel like you, there's probably better Nyan list you could play. Yeah. There's probably better. There's probably better food chain list you can play. But again, like if you're a fan of dog meat, and, and you know that's obviously the appeal with a set like Universes Beyond Fallout. You like the characters, so you want to play the characters. It's not bad. It's just you know there's better. But yeah, that is a, a combo that we definitely neglected to discuss. Um. But yeah, well, I'm with you on combo, Hyper Light. If hmm? is is it a combo? If not only do you have a little C but a big D. <laughs> talk about let's talk about that big d will uh so speaking of big d's dragon's dogma 2 just released i'm not gonna lie that's kind of what i was most excited about but i am really just now getting into Baldur's gate 3 so i'm not gonna have time 
<laughs> and I'm playing a shit ton of Bellatro still because it's just extremely fun to grind. Like, it's infinitely replayable, so I don't know. And I have Helldivers 2 to play. I want to play with my brother later. I haven't been able to, like, for some reason, the every time I start, so Helldivers, like, you'll visit an area on a planet, and then there's, like, multiple quests to do in that area, and you don't succeed technically until you've finished, you know, all of the things in that area. And for some reason, I can get a squad going, finish one of the quests, say one of three, and then everyone jettisons. And it's like, well, we did the first one so quickly. Why not stay? I was, it's, it's so confusing. And for some reason, like the matchmaker is not good about repopulating your, your, you know, uh, instance. So I don't know. That's the last time I played. It's just very frustrating to like grind at all. Um, but at least if I was to play with someone else consistently, I know they would be around to follow through hell divers is fun but that that has sort of turned me away from it uh kind of convinced food chain might be one of the better combos in cdh right now so it it's not bad the issue with food chain is that you need food chain one of the recursive creatures and then some kind of outlet which usually is in the command zone mm -hmm. so it isn't bad but if you had like an a plus b plus commander thing you can usually just remove your commander and then do the Oracle. So it, it, there's a lot of uh, A plus B combos that exist right now that don't require you to have to do something with your commander. See, so with less build around, it's usually a better combo. Food Chain isn't bad right now, though. Food Chain is, I think, in its best position that it's been in a long time. I'll wholeheartedly agree to that at the very least. Who's the best Food Chain commander? Probably Master. Probably the Master. Really? Yeah, because four mana plus has like eight other lines that he can go for outside of food chain, so you don't have to hard build into food chain. Damn. So you use Miss Hollow Griffin, Scourge, Eternal Scourge, like you, you just jam them all in there? And then you do whatever else you want to do to make infinite mana and let you bounce the master over and over again. Mm. Oh yeah, I keep master, forgetting Trax is also another of... food... Uh, another food chain commander. That's yeah, funny. Atrax is very good as well. I still am not the biggest fan of Atrax, uh, at least to the degree that people are discussing. I should say, I believe Atrax is overhyped, is uh, the safest way for me to place that. Because I'm still of the strong opinion that people... She sucks! <laughs> no, no, no. Atrax is good. Atrax is good, but I think Atrax has the Winota problem where... People say that Atrax is the best deck in the game, then everybody starts playing the deck, which bumps up the tournament results, which then makes the deck seem like it's doing a lot better than it's actually doing. But then mm -hmm. when people stop playing the decks and start building other things, or when people realize how to play around the deck, then the deck just kind of slowly falls off and reaches its actual position. Mm. Atraxa has been following the exact same patterns of what happened with Winota, so I'm pretty sure Atrax is just not going to be a thing, or is not going to be a terribly popular thing after, like, a year or two. I think Atrax is still going to be playable, though. I, but I think Atrax is just going to do the same as Winota. She's got some cool art, though. Yeah. Oh, hold hard today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can give to Atrax a Grand Unifier, but I'm not going to lie. I, I don't see seven mana with four pips and get excited. That's just That's just not one of the things I do. But if that if that gets you excited, then good for you. But no, it's it's a little much. Oh, speaking of ah uh, shit, Will, I wish I could get you into Star Wars. I'll have to I'll have to drag someone on here to play with me. I, I mean to get the tabletop simulator set up for Star Wars uh, Unlimited, but there is a commander mode for that game called uh, Twin Twin Sons uh, that you you might enjoy. I don't know. It's singleton format. You might enjoy it. It's um, because they're only on their first set, though. They've limited the card pool to 50, but I think ultimately... Oh, you know, we were talking about it in the Discord. I, it's It goes up to 80, ultimately. But just there's, there's not enough of a card pool to actually successfully play a singleton format in Twin Suns with more cards. But uh, it would be fun, though. I would love to see what that looks like, because... Again, it's like a dual lane system with space and ground, so it's gonna be like magic, except everyone is playing off, playing and reacting off of each other's moves, and then there's battles happening in space and battles happening on the ground. It just seems sick as hell. So, 
I'd love to get some of that for you guys in the future. Itali is really good as well with food chain. Indeed. Itali is very fun. People like the dino. And which Itali, just, which Itali are we talking about? Uh, the blight steel one. Oh. Yeah. I remember that, that. Front, that front side does do food chain things. Um, but yeah. And, uh, for those who just joined in, and because I did a crap job to summarize this the first time, I'd like to re-summarize the whole master ruling that finally popped up. So, for the longest time we've had a debate on what cards are qualified as milled. And to give it all in one concise time again, because I screwed up on doing it well the first time in this stream, originally milled and mill were not keywords, and any card that was put from the library into the graveyard was considered a milled card, regardless of if it came from the top, just as mill was not a keyword, it just described putting cards from the top of the deck into the graveyard. We've had a bunch of uh, ruling changes because a bunch of cards have been printed and mill became a keyword, but we haven't gotten any updates on milled for a long time. But finally, on March 8th, we got a ruling on the mastered that says milled cards are only cards put into the graveyard from the library by effects that say mill. The debate's over. We're good. We got a ruling. I'm happy. <laughs> With you there. I'm, uh... Oh God. It's so... Uh, this game... Alright. I'm making Gecko Moria in One Piece right now. You guys have likely seen the deck if you follow any of the One Piece content here. I pulled nothing for fucking Gecko Moria. It's killing me. Not a, not a hogback in three boxes. Not a single hogback. Killing me, dude. I pulled more alternate art Gecko Morias than I did standard ones, which is great, because I'm going to trade the shit out of those. I definitely don't need... If you need one, let me know. Um, yeah. Nice. Get a life. Nice. I'm not telling you guys to get a life. I just... I, I saw the card and I wanted to showcase it. <laughs> Give me five or whatever you got. I really want to... I think the thing I'm most excited for is another unset. Yeah, Genuinely. Uh, yeah, we've Are we getting one anytime cards. soon? I don't hmm? know. I those, we those, haven't gotten one announced yet, I don't think, but maybe. Be best lands, historically. Best lands. And uh, some of the most fun magic you can have, generally. So just yeah. give us a new unset. I would, I would be very excited for that. But speaking of un, hang tight for next week. We should be covering Teshar with likely stickers. Um, yeah, if you want to yeah. try, if you want to try your best against me playing Teshar, then hang out Friday while we build the list and then obviously, uh, get some gameplay in. So that is something we do on our, oh shit, I guess that would be an FNM day. It's fine. I'll, I'll, if you're on the discord, which you can join in the link in the description, I'll holler and see if you guys want to play games or we could just do a deck tech or whatever. But uh, do hang tight for more content and via live streams. I want to get the ball rolling again now that this the hectic ass week is over of uh, doing um, sorcery content on Saturdays, Magic Fridays. Uh, Thursdays just going to be general live stream stuff, usually gameplay. Um, definitely want to hang out with Will or just you guys, if depending on what we structure there. And then One Piece on Wednesdays. I want to get more pre-recorded deck techs for you guys. Um, I've had people stop me, like at Game Stories, to to thank me for the pre-recorded ones. So clearly, there's an audience for it. Um, and if it's useful to have like concise deck text on, you know, whatever the meta deck is, then I can just get those out there for you guys because they're not difficult, and it does help to know how to math and play the game for a particular leader. But yeah, I'm going to be playing Gekko Moria, which you guys have seen, and I'm probably going to be playing Yamato as well. So it'd be fun to give you guys a Yamato list specifically for, I think I want to try Fishmen. I know there was a list that won recently, some form of tournament with a Fishmen deck. That would be really cool. Um, sorry, I'm going to read some of these comments before we close this out, though. Uh, Aaron Hall. To, oh. Yeah, to Aaron Hall. I just saw that. So... If you use New Blood to gain control of an opponent's commander, and then they use Agent of Treachery to gain control of their commander again, does the part of New Blood that says change all creature types listed on that card's card box to Vampire still apply? Yes. So uh, Agent of Treachery is basically just another aura that's affecting that creature. Even if its control is gained back, as long as that creature remains on the field, whatever creature type in the text box will still say vampire for as long as it's still on the field, even if it changes uh, control of different players. <laughs> Which Kiki type commander? I'm sorry. 
uh, the the guy, the father of uh, synths, I think is his name. What? Uh, potential, right? I, that might be. Uh, it's either that or something from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Oh, oh it's probably Sahili? something that Mark Rosewater talked about. Oh, uh, well, I can look it up really quick. Um, yeah. If you're hanging out, thanks for hanging out. We're, we're going to close shop in a second here, though, so I can cook. But... Jirid? Jirid Mirror of the Wilds? This is really bad uh, imagery, I'm sorry. And they don't have it, like, outlined here in text. Non-token creatures you control have tap, create a token that's a cop copy of target token you control that enter the battlefield this turn? Yes? We've seen Girid before, right? I think so. Uh... Gear of the Wilds, thing? not official, but probably official. Not official, but probably oh. official. Yeah, this thing. Uh, I mean, that looks like magic art to me. And that's definitely the board, red border treatment. It's uh, Naya. It's only three mana for a 3-3 three, three with haste. Human Shaman. Um, so it doesn't give the tokens haste. But if you have a hasty token, you can make infinite copies of something. So Yo, yo, is there something here I don't with know, Thorn... But Thornbite staff? Could you do some shenanigans with Thornbite staff? Hold up. Is there a token that has like create a token that's a copy of target token you control target um, token you control that enter the battlefield this turn? Just needs to be uh, a token. Thornbite staff and Mog Diver or a uh, Mog Fanatic. That's uh, infinite damage. Create a token that's a copy of target token you control. It needs to be. You need a Mog oh. Fanatic token oh, first, though. You need to have a. Yeah, you need to have a token enter. That makes it much harder. Uh, I don't think it's a good combo then. It's not a good combo card. I yeah. don't think it's going to be CH viable. I think it's definitely going to be casually viable because there's a lot of fun, dumb, casual things you can do. But CDH-wise, probably not. I got a little hype there. I'm not going to lie. I yeah. I'm always looking for an excuse to play Thornbite Staff. If you guys don't know what it is, it auto-equips the Shamans and it's untap utility. You can also use the thing to like ping something for damage. I think in this instance, you want to use Girid to start the combo line. There might be something there, though. Uh, look into it. <laughs> someone, There's... someone, research. Did you talk yeah, about I Nick Valentine? Know. Yeah, we did talk about Nick Valentine. March of Machines and basically anything else like a Academy manufacturer. I don't think we talked about Nick Valentine with March of Machines. Yeah, you can do infinite death triggers with that, but you need to have a death trigger outlet mm. with uh, with blue. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Village bell ringer, sun striker, uh, sun strike legionnaire combos, better golem, treasure token. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the issue is that you need to make a copy of village bell ringer. So it, right. it, you can only make a token. You can only make a token copy of a token creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Um. Uh, so yeah, really dual caster mage backup. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I don't know. You need, uh, you need like a heat shimmer style effect on top of like a thorn bite. Or yeah, it's it's a village bell ringer heat shimmer in your commander for infinite village bell ringer tokens. It doesn't end the game immediately, but it will set up to end the game next turn. Well, there you go. There you There's, have it. There is combo potential. The issue is, it is so difficult to get there. It's better to just do Kiki Jiki stuff. Yeah, but Kiki Jiki is like not in vogue anymore, dude. We're over Kiki Jiki. We're done breaking mirrors. No. Oh, someone brought up a Altar of the Brood with the March of the Machines Nick Valentine thing. It's true. That does it. Well, there you go. Thank you for the, the final combos there. Any, well, any closing thoughts before we end this one? Uh, if you liked any of these things that we talked about, use our TCG Player affiliate link to buy some of these cards to support the show while also supporting your own collection. Uh, if you could think of anything that we missed, let us know. We'd like covering more things. And, uh, yeah, I'm very happy that we finally put that whole mill debate to rest because we were told one thing. It, things have been changing. We have not been given clarification. We've been given clarification now, and I'm happy it's over. That baby to bed. 
Oh, indeed, Put indeed. Baby to bed. Um, yeah, we should do a. I just want to play some video games soon. We can do some. We can do some more. Thank you for liking, by the way. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But yeah, we should do more. Um, the game in chat. I just want to. I just want a fun game we can game and chat with. Thank you. Thank you. Great show. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm excited to discuss some future sets and um, pre-recorded content. I know we always want to see gameplay and or pre-recorded video, but that that might trickle out slower. Uh, have a good night, guys. Thank you. I think I will. I'll try to. It depends on how this meal comes out. I made yeah. that brine really quick for this pork chop. I'm hoping it's good. We'll I mean, soon if find you out. want like a, a quick and easy dinner setup, my thing is always just do rice with anything mixed in it. That's a good thing that you can portion out to however much you want to portion it, and it takes all of like 20 minutes to get it set up. 